Not cool, Rich. Not cool. Rich says, if anyone saw my Instagram video today, you'd know why I'm running late. Uh, having some mic issues. Hopefully everything sounds all right. Welcome, everyone. I appreciate you coming to the Monday Night Weekly live stream. And we already have Janice. Got to give thanks to Janice for becoming a member moments before I was originally scheduled to start. So thank you for joining the Dream Team. Got a really cool video this week. Um, about three hours of footage to try to condense down. Jimmy and I went up into the mountains yet, uh, yesterday. Got a lot of interesting and not so interesting things on film. But on to the subject. How much filtration does your aquarium actually need? And what I want to talk about is not the different types of filtration. I mean, sponge filters, canister filters, hang on back filters. It's all been done to death. They're all good. They're all bad uh, for various reasons, except for sponge filters. They're pretty much good always. Specifically, what I want to talk about is beneficial bacteria and how much does your bene how much beneficial bacteria does your aquarium need? Because I feel like when I go over all of these filter videos or, you know, reading blogs, it's all about how much surface space for your beneficial bacteria. You know, that's that's what makes this one better than the other one. And, and bio rings and lava rocks. And what it comes down to is, like, do you need any of that at all? And I'm just, just going to talk about this for just a minute and then hopefully get your guys' opinion. Um because I feel like, and obviously this is not like new tanks. I'm not talking about new tanks. I'm talking about maybe a tank that's been set up for like a year. Um, that's just really well established. You got live plants. Hopefully everyone's doing live plants. If you're not, get some live plants. <laughs> um, but like beneficial bacteria grows on everything that's in your aquarium. So, you know, I see like these sand bed filters, all these, all these different filters, and they're all for growing beneficial bacteria, but it's not really even needed. Like at what point are your beneficial bacteria dying off because, you know, your fish just aren't pooping enough or they're pooping, I should say they're pooping the right amount and you have plenty of beneficial bacteria. Like I'd, I'd be willing to bet on this tank right behind me. If you just got rid of all filtration, there's enough beneficial bacteria on the plants, on the hardscape, the wood, the rocks, in the substrate that you wouldn't even need filtration. Obviously, you know, when I'm not talking about uh, like water flow, circulation, things like that, I'm, I'm strictly talking beneficial bacteria. And I don't know, I just, it seems to be a topic that a lot of people argue over in forums, on Facebook group, like, I don't know. I'd love to get your guys' opinion because I just, I'm trying to go through like all my tanks in my head right now that all have sponge filters and you never, and you never have an issue. Like I have aquariums that only have air stones, which I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of just using air stones and like, I guess if you're going to use an air stone, just hook up a sponge filter. I mean, really, <laughs> I was, you know, if you, if you want your bubbles, get your sponge filter. Um, Eric says, I think it really depends on the tank. More bio load should have more filtration and, and light bio load, less filtration. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm talking about like the majority. Um, well, I mean, maybe the majority of people are overstocking their tanks. Um, another reason I want to talk about this is because on my video on Sunday, people saw like how much Corey, is feeding his fish and it's insane amounts. There's so many comments on, oh my gosh, he's overfeeding. Oh, I guess I'm underfeeding. But uh, there's so much more that goes into that. And so just to address that, remember he's breeding fish. Also remember automatic daily water changes. Uh, you can throw in that kind of food when you, when, you, when you got fry and when you got auto water changes. But uh, Brian says, people always tell me you can never have enough filtration, but I agree there's a point. Yeah, obviously you can over filtrate. I mean, I don't know that that's the right term because all essentially all you're doing is circulating water. At some point, that's all it's going to be doing is circulating water. There's no way like, well, let's say that like on this tank right here behind me, 
Like we got an FX six hooked up to it. We got the flow turned down so it's not blowing the fish all over the place. But this is like a 30 gallon tank with nano fish in it. That's over filtration. These guys are not gonna poop enough to fill up an FX six with beneficial bacteria. It's just not gonna happen. Chevy Fish says a non-essential filtration, right? I agree. More fish than we have per tank, though. Uh, Lucas is proof in proof in the pudding for nano tanks and nano fish. Cichlids, you need filters, just dirty big fish. Yeah, if you're talking about removing waste, exactly. Then yes. Um, I mean, African cichlid tanks are generally overstocked. Central and South American cichlids are generally bigger. So yeah, we, if you're talking about removing waste, but we should be doing that in our water changes anyways. I'd be willing to bet in a well-established aquarium, just like Lucas, although, again, I would bare minimum use a sponge filter instead of just an air stone. But yeah, it's, it's just not needed. And there's the, uh, the video that Aquarium Co-op did of that fish store in California where it's like they're all like all natural tanks. So I do believe the oxygen is important. Obviously, if you don't have oxygen, then you're not going to have beneficial bacteria, right? Like I said, you're going to do an air stone, at least do a sponge filter. I think I've said that enough, right? <laughs> all right, real quickly, real quickly. Uh, Fish Room Fever with the 99 cent super chat. Thank you, Matt. Uh, uh, I, I almost called you Matt. Mike, Fish Tank Barn, $1.49 pie. We're getting close to the pie. Logan with the $2, never enough filtration. Yeah, I think it just comes down to, like I said, circulation. You're just going to over, it's just circulation at some point. Um, Bob, like the live stream. Okay, let me hit the like button real quick. There you go. Like button is hit just for you. <laughs> uh, Mr. Ed's Aquatic says, I run redundant filtration for polishing, and when the power goes out, uh, goes off, I can use battery backups. Yep. I mean, the redundancy part, though, so, again, you have, like, a sponge filter in the tank. You have, like, a hang-on-back filter. If, and, and let's just say, hmm, how, how could we set up this scenario correctly? Let's just say, like, a majority of your beneficial bacteria is in that sponge filter on your stuff in the aquarium. And there's not enough, you know, waste to provide beneficial bacteria and I guess it would be the other way around. So this, this would make more sense. Let's say like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to like word this correctly. you hang on back filter, all your beneficial bacteria is in there on the hardscape. It fails. Your sponge filter has been in there in the whole time, but it's just been doing oxygen, right? Like there's not enough ways to, to create enough beneficial bacteria on the sponge filter. So that fails. If your hang on back failed, would your sponge filter be able to like pick up the slack? Um, I guess it would depend on how long the tank's been set up, I guess. So here's what I'm trying to say. Don't stress out about your beneficial bacteria if your tank's been set up for a long time. That's what it all comes down to. Um, like when, when power goes out, uh, you know, in situations like that, I always hear people like freak out. Oh, my power's out. I'm going to, you know, my tank's going to crash. That's what your sponge filter's for. But even if you don't have a sponge filter, like all you have to do is drop it in air stone. That's it. Your beneficial bacteria on all of your hardscape is more than enough. More than enough. I guarantee it. And I'd be willing, I'd be willing to bet anyone on like a well-established tank if they just turn off their filter, you know, Use an airstone and keep up with your water changes. You would have absolutely no issues at all. That's big companies can't make money off an airstone and a sponge filter. Yep, Flamingo Aquatics, you hit it right there, uh, nail on the head. Big companies cannot make money off of an airstone and a sponge filter. Definitely not as much. I mean, an airstone probably costs like five cents, and they sell for like a dollar. So that's pretty good markup. You know, I have I have no idea. I've never like tried to buy 10 million air stones to get a discount, but <laughs> uh, the redundant part isn't for biologicals, just to aerate the water. Yeah, and, and again, like if as long as like that's your expectations, is like that's why you're doing it. Like then you know, like you're gonna be prepared for any type of emergency. So yeah, 
Um, there was a lot of times when I did hang on back filters just for circulation. That's it. Um, it's like, well, I have this power head that's seven watts and I could put that in there or I have a hang on back filter that's like eight watts or I could put that on there for circulation. And then in addition to that, I'm going to get the, you know, the waste removal. So carbon keeps the stink to a minimum. Ron, if your aquarium stink, I feel like there's something wrong. Like I have, I do the sniff test on tanks all the time. And really the only time they smell is when you stir up the substrate. Like that's when you get that fish tank smell is if you're like changing everything over, um, you know, swapping tanks, then, uh, yeah, then you get the, you all know what the, the, the fish tank smell is, but otherwise, um, if your tank smells, something's going on, <laughs> you got dying snails, anubias rot, like some of the worst things you can ever smell. Um, I've, I can't even remember the last time I used carbon in any of my tanks, but you are, it is accurate though, Ron. It is accurate. Carbon will keep the stink to a minimum, but I feel like it's, if you're using carbon, so your fish tank doesn't stink, then I feel like you're just doing a bandage. You're bandaging something. Uh, Symphonic Aquatics, I'm ready for the blonde girl. Real daft, how to set up a canister filter video. Been done, but we need a fresh one. It's probably not going to happen on my channel because I'm pretty anti canister filter. Uh, they're by far my least favorite filters. <sighs> or if you have old food on the lid. Yeah, I mean, and now we're just talking about aquarium maintenance in general, which is all right as well. Uh, your lid should definitely be on your list to clean. Uh, not like every other week when you do your water changes, but maybe like once a quarter, like every three months, clean off your lids. You'd be surprised. Um, how much film can build up on your lid and over the course of like six months you don't notice it because it's just a little bit every day but after like uh, six months you clean off your lid and your aquarium is just way brighter you're like whoa I just gained like 190 million par it is you'd be surprised definitely clean your tops I'm guilty of not doing it very often definitely not as much as I should but uh, Mr. Ed's Aquatic says, my tanks smell like a nice stream or river. Should not be stinky. Exactly. Exactly. It, I mean, it, you shouldn't smell like cologne. I mean, or whatever you think smells good. <laughs> it should smell like water, like a stream. Exactly. Um, Steve Fight Aquatics, many newbies search dates of the video. Um, I don't think I've ever done a can. Have I ever done a canister filter setup video? I don't know. Uh, Danica Aquatic says, if I smell funk, I hunt the source down. Exactly. Exactly. Dead fish you can't find. Yep. Yep. Um, I can only get three at a time. What? What is this? Forgot to turn my phone off. Another, another fail. Another fail. Oh, man. I had this turned all the way up, too. All right. That's not going to happen again. If it, yeah, if it smells like cologne, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> Keep the gasoline out of the fish tank, folks. Uh, are we open to any question or subject only? You're always welcome to answer questions. Uh, there's a lot of people here, though, so if I don't see it, um, just keep repeating it, um, and hopefully I'll see it. I try my best to answer every question, whether they're on topic or not. And uh, I pretty much never stay on topic. <laughs> if you're new here, staying on topic only lasts about 10 minutes on my stream. <laughs> um, I tested my water after three weeks of no water change, and I have zero ammonia, nitrates, and nitrates. Nitrites and nitrates. Tank has been running for months. Should I up my fertilizer game for plants? Well, Johnny, um, I would ask how you're testing your nitrates. Uh, if it is the the API liquid test kit, it's very easy to not do those right. Um, like when I first got back into the hobby for probably like the first year or two, I was like, I never have any nitrates. My plants are like excellent filters. And you know, you shake the, you shake the, the vial for like 10 seconds and you're like nothing. 
but you really got to shake the crap out of that thing for like 20 minutes to get an accurate reading of nitrates on on the liquid api test kit uh, i removed my lids to do green oh wait i removed my lids due to oh due to green algae but now i have cloudy water i have tried clarifiers i would never try water clarifiers and started weekly water changes but it's still cloudy well out well adding a large co-op sponge filter so i would get the appropriate size sponge filter for your tank like if you have a 10 gallon i would not get the large one just to try to clear that up most likely you have some type of um, bacterial bloom or algae bloom um, and it could just take a while for that to settle up uh, even if you do like weekly 50% water changes, uh, it can just take a while. So be patient. Don't don't like freak out because nothing's bad is going to happen. It's not necessarily bad bacteria. Um, it's just a bacteria bloom. And so, yeah, like don't worry. Just keep up with your water changes. And uh, I would definitely add uh, a sponge filter though. Um, Elizabeth Hughes, four dollar super chat. Any tips for my first shell dweller tank? Multis multis well do you already have your shell dweller tank are you looking to get one um my advice with shellies the more space the better because they produce like guppies once they're happy and they start spawning there's basically no stopping them uh my very first multi multi tank was a nine and a half gallon long and then it just took a couple weeks i was up to a 20 gallon long then a 40 gallon then a 55 gallon and i just had not 55 gallon, 50 gallon, low boy. And uh, yeah, they <laughs> if they're happy, they're gonna breed like crazy. So just be aware, be aware. Otherwise, the more shells, the merrier. Um, sand for substrate, I would never do gravel with multis. Sand is gonna be way more enjoyable. Uh, every day you'll walk up to like a, just a new pile of sand somewhere. They're super awesome fish. You can't go wrong. Uh, yeah, Kay Walker says, shake vigorously for a minute. Let stand for five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, the nitrate, yeah, not good, not good. Would cycling a new tank with an airstone take longer? No, um, it wouldn't be any shorter either, but nope. You still just got to be patient. Okay, hold on here. I think I missed Fish Tank Barn again with the $1.50 Super Chat. Thank you. Thank you. All right. It's 60 gallons with four large gulf fish and a pleco. Um, you definitely have a lot of waste. Definitely. So I would, in that situation, definitely increase my water changes. Yeah. You probably have a pretty strong bacteria bloom. Uh, that's a pretty much four large goldfish and a pleco. That's like a five poop factories going nonstop, nonstop. Um, on a 75, what kind of filter would you use since you're, oh man, it just jumped on me. Uh, where did that comic go? Where did it go? Where did it go? 75 gallon. Oh, on a 75 gallon filter, would you, wait. On a 75, what kind of filter would you use since you're such an anti-canister? Um, so it would depend on stocking. If it was mostly, you know, I guess not, not even stocking, a little bit, but like planted, unplanted, I would do hang on back, honestly. Um, I would probably do, if it was planted, I would do two smaller hang on backs on each side versus one large hang on back on one side. Uh, simply because plants, you want circulation with plants. You don't want dead spots. Uh, you'll get algae. Um, also, if you have dead spots, and you'll get nutrient deficiencies in plants. Um, so, yeah, I would split. I would, like I said, instead of one large canister, I would do two smaller on each side and then um, throw in a sponge filter. And I would hide the sponge filter in the back, like behind a piece of wood or rock or plants, like tall plants. You can hide them pretty well. Rico Stan says, I unliked and reliked again. No, nope. can't cheat the system that way. Uh, two ways to tell if something is wrong with your tank, sight and smell. Yeah, it should always smell good. It should smell like nature. It should smell like nature. 
Dwayne Allgood says, I removed my FX4, my 90 gallon, switched to Aqua Clear 110, a medium co op, and a large co op sponge. Live bears, neon, and large self and plecos. Will this be enough? I'm not a fan of the FX4. Me neither. Yes. Yes. The Aqua Clear 110 is a massive hang on back filter. I mean, that's a workhorse. Um, not my favorite. Not my favorite. I'm, I'm like, I'm the small mi minority that does not like Aqua Clear. Uh, hang on back filters, but not for their function. Well, kind of for their function. Like I hate their lids. For me, I can never get those lids to stay on. Like, I don't know. They're like always just tweaked somehow, always just different. I don't know. I can never get the lids on. And then um, when it comes to hang on back filters, I love anything that's self priming, which is why I love the Aquion. Um, even the Tetra hang on back filters are self priming. Um, yeah. That's anything self priming is pretty much my favorite. Uh, yay! I'm excited for you, dude. Hmm, who are you talking about? I appreciate the genetics involved in that fish, Moose Aquatics. I know the president of the IBC in Thailand imported those plus guppies. I guess talking about her betta fish video. I don't know. Bob Kaler with the twenty dollars super chat. I finally made it down. Says you are amazing and a dancing pair. Thank you, Bob Kaler. I appreciate it. Um. I, I want to get it. I'm watching this dude dance. I kind of want to get a hat like that. Uh, Vernet guy says, when cycling a new tank, the more dissolved oxygen you have, the better. Some people even increase the temperature before adding fish because the bacteria will grow faster. Yes. Yep. So with warmer water, hey, warmer water will help, but you don't want to like, there's a limit. Obviously, you don't want like 110 degree aquarium water. Uh, but if you're if you're just setting up a tank, waiting for it to cycle, get it up to like 80, 84 degrees. I probably wouldn't go over 85. But again, like I wouldn't. When it comes to the hobby, I wouldn't try to do things fast. All right, be patient. That's the number one key to this hobby is patience. You gotta be patient. Aqua Discovery with the five dollar super chat says canister filters equals Bob's favorite. Thank you for the $5 super chat. I appreciate it. You should become a member instead of, oh, you are a member. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Thank you, my friend. Uh, fingers and everything crossed to grow out. Only have a few more good weeks of rainbow weather. Race is on. That is right. Danny does life. Um, our tub of yellow rainbows have fry. Pretty dang sweet. Um, clearly, She's a far better rainbow fish keeper than me because none of my tubs have fry in them. None of them. Hey. None of them have fry. But there you go. She's she's the rainbow master now, and I'm the noob. <sighs> Evan says, hi, what size tank would you recommend for 10? Melanotania, Splendida, and Nornata. Long term, four feet at least, 75 gallons. If you can only do 55, do 55. But those fish, like five years from now, are going to be like big, big, like six inch fish. They get pretty big. So any, anything four feet minimum and the wider. So like 75 would be like my minimum for that fish. But you can do four feet. And I've even seen people keep them in, in, three, fo in three foot, 40 gallon breeders. It's not pretty, but it can be done. Um, HEPA Aquatic says, Bob, what are your thoughts on the use of UV sterilizers for pathogens? Um, I mean, it works. It does work, but I'm pretty simplistic in my fish keeping ways, um, which is why I love sponge filters. I do own a UV sterilizer, um, but in, it, there has to be like something really wrong for me to break it, break it out and use it. Um, I don't like equipment. <laughs> you, you'd come over to my fish room right now and you'd be like, what are you talking about? You got crap everywhere. You got hang on back sitting over here. You got sponge filters over here, <laughs> breeder boxes everywhere. Um, as far as what's in the tank <laughs> and like equipment that goes in the tank, I'm not a fan of like just hooking up a lot of stuff. So unless there was a specific need, um, I would never just use it. To use it now you specifically say pathogen so if there's something going on in your tank and you need it i would absolutely use it for sure 
Scrolling on down. Oh my gosh. Whew. Uh, see what I lost my male Praycox today. I didn't know what happened. He was breathing heavily on the substrate 20 minutes later. Didn't you just lose a another rainbow? Uh, a Parkinsoni? Hmm. Scott's Aquatic says, can we please get some more likes? Please and thank you, everyone. Don't forget to hit the like button. That's all I ask. All I ask. Um, is this in the same tank as your Parkinsona? I don't remember. I don't remember. Candy Overhaul says, didn't you lose another one recently? Yeah. Cycling a tank with no filter? Um, MW, it can be done. Uh, it would take... I think you want the circulation. So even like just add an airstone, anything to help circulate the water, I feel like is going to um, uh, is going to help speed up that process. But again, just be patient. Just be patient. Um, I bet Steen would love the title hang on back filter line. So to be fair, I've never even seen one in person. I've uh, never even really looked at one. When I'm, when I'm looking for a hang on back filter, what I look for is how big the compartment is. Cause I don't use any of the factory junk that comes with it. Um, like the, the, the filter floss crap cartridges that they make, that's just a huge scam to get more money. Um, so I don't use any of that stuff. I use my own batting, um, whatever, whatever, whatever I need that filter to do. I, I customize it to myself. So again, that's why I like the Aquions because their compartment is huge and it's open, right? So it's not like it's not like the uh, like the Marine Lands where the compartments are separate. So it's two smaller compartments, and then the, you know the pump and everything is in the middle. Um, I really like the Aquion because the pump is off to the side and it's just one big open space that I can throw whatever I need to throw in there. So, yeah. <sighs> best words to live by if it works don't fix it don't fix it uh let's see here eric furlow with the five dollar super chat bob how do you feel about c chem today versus Aqu c chem today versus aqua clears c chem today's titles titles oh i think i just went over that so again never played with a with the c chem title at all um I just, I, so I don't have enough, I, don't, I really don't have that much experience with it. I probably have two aqua clears going right now. Um, and it's only because they've been set up for so long. That's one thing about the aqua clears is they, they're pretty reliable, right? They work forever. Indoor fishing inside. Welcome to the Steen Dream Team. Gonna have a pretty cool video if anyone likes nature. So it's gonna take me like all week to edit though, like all week. Title has a larger compartment than Aqua than Aqua Clear, or are you talking about Aquion? Aqua Clear or Aquion? Yeah, I feel like the I don't know. I will say that I do feel like the Aqua Clears are overpriced. Like I would never pay retail for an Aqua Clear. I would sit there and wait for the crazy discounts on Amazon or. You know, PetSmart sometimes has them for crazy cheap, but like their big one is what, like $80 or something. I think that's overpriced. Kyle says, poly clear for the win. Yes. Polyfill came from Fish Haven. Hmm. Through any team watching only 169 likes, please hit a like, hit the like driving while listening. Air stones and sponge filters. Air stones in, in your sponge filter. Uh, stocking on the tank behind you. They are CPDs, Celestial Pearl Danios, and Pseudomagill Luminatus. I believe that's it. I have yet to see any other fish in this tank. Uh, Bob Kittler says, John and Lisa sell the title. Yep, yeah, I, I would never buy one. I would never buy one. Um, at this point, like, the, the only time I buy hang on back filters 
is when they're crazy cheap. Crazy cheap. Uh, Mr. Ed Aquatic says, titles are pretty good. I like the built-in skimmer. I feel like I have way too much duckweed. Like a built-in skimmer on a hang-on back filter is going to last about five minutes in any of my tanks. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Jamie McDonald, what's up, buddy? I swapped all my hang-on backs to titles. AC, Aquion, Tetris, titles are superior to them all. To them all. Maybe. Maybe. I'll, I mean, if someone wants to send me one, I'll play with it, but I'm not going to spend money on one. I just, at this point, I don't want to spend money on something I don't need. And I'm sure I spend lots of money on stuff I don't need, but hang on backs. Definitely don't need hang on back filters. I've got boxes and boxes of hang on back filters. Um, 133 CPEL, CPEL, CPEL 133. Hopefully that's right. Uh, titles are okay, but I like sponge filters better. Yeah. I mean, nothing's easier. Nothing's easier. Titles are nice because they don't have a divider inside versus the Aquion. The title also has flow adjustment. Flow adjustment. Uh, not true, Bob. I have tons of duckweed in several tanks, and the title chews it up. Hmm. Does it chew it up and spit it out? Like, what happens What happens to it? <laughs> Bob Kaler with the $5 flex. Thank you, buddy. Title skimmer versus fry. Oh, yeah. How about that? What are you going to do with your fry? I actually might have some Pseudo Miguel Gertrude fry. Maybe. Maybe. There are there are guppies in the same tank, so they're probably guppies, but they look a little longer and skinnier than guppy fry. So I'm hoping, hoping. And the Gertrude are uh, Gary Lang strain. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Anyways, just a little tangent there. Dwayne Allgood with the $10 Super Chat. Thanks for all your help. Thank you, my friend. I really do appreciate it. Um, this month, okay, Chris, Jobs Aquarium Tanks, $4.20 Super Chat for Bob's Title Fund. Mm -hmm. KD Tropical says, I can send you a title, Bob, if you're nice to me. Um, I don't know. Hang on, back filters. Ugh. Ugh. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Deborah says, I use the Aquions that came in my tank kits, hot rod them, work fine to move water. Again, and it's like kind of like what I said earlier at the, at the start of the stream. When is too much too much? How many gadgets and gizmos can we fit into filters that's just not necessary in the first place? All right. I mean, I don't know. Again, this is coming from someone who has never used um, a title. But what, what are the old, like, is it similar to the old Fluval, like C4 hang on backs? Uh, because those, those had adjustable flow. They had a surface skimmer. Hmm. Because I, I do have those old Fluval hang on backs still and i'd be curious if anybody knows what i'm talking about i don't know if it's a, i don't know if it's a c4 i feel like the model number was a c4 but i don't know curtis st martin better late than never golf night good evening everyone good evening yeah i mean honestly honestly here we go here we go okay moonstone says beginners are the backbone of the hobby though so hang on back is not a terrible idea yes that's true that's true i feel like even the Marine Land, like the Marine Land 350, their second biggest one, you can buy on Amazon sometimes for $13. The title, how much is a title? Okay, let's go look. Let me go look. Uh, I, haven't, I don't even know how much these are. This is how much I don't know about the title. Oh, I hate when you do that. Uh, looking... Looking, looking, looking. So how much is like the 110? I feel like the 110 is probably f similar. $75. Let's go. Let's go. With, okay. Well, I'll go to the one smaller. The title 75, roughly $70. So Marineland 
thirteen dollars. Title seventy dollars. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm not trying to ruin your business, John. <laughs> so let's, I'm not trying to trash on your product, but just naturally came up, and I'm just thinking, like, I don't know. Is it is it like forty fifty dollars better? I don't know. Uh, I can get an LFS Title seventy five for sixty five dollars. Yeah, so even sixty five dollars, seventy dollars with tax, blah blah blah, whatever, right? Or thirteen dollars. I will say though, the Marineland hang on back filters are are garbage. All right, the stupid bio wheel. I mean, talk about gimmicky. I never use those. I throw them straight in the trash because it's it's just a gimmick. But I don't know. I don't know. Like I bought like six Marineland 350s when they were thirteen dollars. I still have like three of them brand new in the box. You can't not buy it. Not, and, and again, I realize it's not everyday price. So that's like when they do their stupid, really crazy prices for whatever reason. So let's just, let's, to be fair, let's go to like an Aquion hang on back filter. And okay, can I select this size here? No. Whoa. Okay, these are way too expensive too. So right now, regular regular price on the on the Marineland 350 is twenty three dollars. Less than half the price. The uh, the Aquion is fifty dollars though. So well, if you're comparing like the Aquion seventy five fifty dollars versus Tidal for whatever you know what you guys are saying, I'd probably go with the Tidal for ten more dollars, simply because I've never tried one. But we'll see. I use the bio wheel like a cleanup reminder. Wheel stopped. Got to clean that thing out. I guess. I guess. And there's so many. If we're talking about gimmicky things, what about like the LED filter cartridge replacement on the Aquion hang on back filter? That is like the dumbest thing I have ever seen. Like, get rid of it. Charge me less money. Get rid of this crap that no one needs so the product is cheaper. I'm really going to go off on a tangent now. But anyways. My bio wheels never turned. Never. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's pretty common. It's pretty common. If you get, like, first of all, if the little pegs on the side of the bio wheel are, like, like not just perfect, then it's not going to spin. If they're, like, a little crooked, not going to spin. There's a lot of things that can go wrong with those. Curtis says, I'm more a canister guy myself. been eyeballing the Title 110 lately, but I've been eyeballing it. I mean... I, won't, I don't want a free one from John because I don't want to take money from him. But if, like, if Seachem reached out and, like, hey, we'll give you a free one to try out, then I might. Then I might. So Cal Fish Noob says, I appreciate your content. Well, thank you. I appreciate you. Uh, let's see. I think more local fish stores should be pushing sponge filters more. My Pet Smart doesn't have them at all. And the only one and only one smaller LFS has them. Um, I think they're getting more popular, but there's just, I mean, let's be real. These hang on back filters probably cost less than $10 for them to make. And by the time they get to Petco, they're like $50, $60. They're making way more money on those than they're, than they're ever going to make on sponge filters. Anyways, (laughs) I feel like I've done enough damage tonight, so... (laughs) Moving on, I'm convinced the health of my tank rests on the bacteria of my bio wheel. Did you read the box? That's so funny. That's so funny. Yeah. Ugh. I will say, like wet dry filters, I can dig those. Like if you're talking about a sump and having like, whenever I've done a sump, I've always done the trickle down wet dry thing. I don't know why. I Well, one, I think it's cool. <laughs> That's probably why. It's probably why. Uh, the Sun Sun HW3000 is my go-to filter. Another brand of filters that I've never tried. Never tried Sun Sun. Um, one Dirty Platy. Bob, high five. I don't know which Bob you're talking to, but I'll high five you any day. I'm disappointed my pet smart will not let you get within six feet of the tanks. Can't even see the tanks. How is that even a thing? Is that right? I haven't been to PetSmart in forever, but Petco's not that way. They only allow one person in the aquatic section at a time. But 
Uh, the bio wheel doesn't hold much bacteria, so you shouldn't rely on that much. Yeah, it's a joke. It's a joke. Yep. <laughs> Man, those stupid bio wheels. Uh, Steen, what's up with deep sand substrates? Helpful or troubling? If done right, um, well, I guess how deep are we talking? Are we talking like seven, eight inches? Or are we talking like some people think I have deep substrate because I go like three to four inches. Like three inches is my minimum. I like to be able to get plants in there. I like for them to stay down. Like these people that do like one inches of substrate, I don't know. I don't know. Like that's such a pain in the butt. So I always do, I always do like three inches, three to four inches is, is, is mine. Um, I feel like you'd have to get up to maybe like 12 inches of substrate before like it starts getting rid of nitrate. I don't know. Not my expertise though. I know father fish loves deep substrate, but, um, it's kind of out of my realm of expertise. I would do it. I would try it and I would, I would experiment if I had like a sump and I would just like fill the sump up with substrate, uh, probably dirt to be honest. Do you guys buy bottled bacteria? So a lot of the bottled bacteria is just snake oil. There are a few brands, um, like the Fritz brands has, has actual beneficial bacteria in it. Um, the thing for me though, is it's, it's hard to know like how it's stored affects it. Um, how, when it was made affects it. Like was this bottle of beneficial bacteria sitting in a warehouse for like a year before it was even shipped to the pet store? I don't know. I don't know. So uh, I just, I, I definitely don't rely on the beneficial, like the bottled bacteria to cycle a tank. Um, I'll use it, but I won't, I won't just dump it in and be like, okay, good to go. Good to go. Um, oh man. George Bush getting out of control. Let's just, uh, well, let's just get rid of that guy. There we go. That's easier. Uh, anyways, so don't, if you're going to spend money on anything, spend money on test kits, either the strips or the liquid test kit. Don't spend money on bottled bacteria unless, unless you know you have the budget for it. But if you're just getting into the hobby, um, I mean, that should be like the number one thing you buy, not all the snake oil stuff. And talk about snake oil stuff. At Petco, they have like betta water, like bottled water for bettas. Like, how is that any different than any other water? Or, you know, they, there's all this like specialized, specialized betta crap. Man, snake oil, all of it. Dogs are up to no good. Okay, I'm back. Your PetSmart sucks. Ours just makes you stay six feet apart from employees once you pick something. Hmm. It's RO water. Why would I want RO water for my beta? Doesn't make any sense. I always cycled with bottled bacteria. Fish the cycles with pure ammonia. Honestly, they all work. Um, they say it are eggs. There's definitely some that doesn't. There's definitely some. I mean, like, I don't know. I don't know. I guess it's all anecdotal, but I've never had it speed up my cycle like ever. Bob, would you use a bag of mulm from another fish room? Um, hmm. I don't know if it was someone I trusted. Sure. Like if, if I'm going over to Corey's house and just bagging up some mulm. Sure. But I don't know, like if it was just like an acquaintance or I wouldn't definitely wouldn't do it from a fish store. Never do it from a fish store. But I don't know. If we're talking about cycling, ex this is exactly why we have sponge filters. Say you have a tank, you're new, you only have one tank. If you only have one tank, you must be new. But you finally step up and get your second tank. You just take your sponge filter out of the old one, put it in the new one, Take the sponge filter you bought for your new one, put that one in the old one, 
and you're good to go. It is really that simple. There's enough beneficial bacteria on all the hardscape. You don't have to worry about it. You're not going to lose your cycle. <sighs> Way easier. Buy a sponge filter for $6 or spend $15 on bottled bacteria that doesn't work. So you buy three or four bottles of it. I don't know. Getting mom from LR Bretts. That is a thing. That is a thing. Uh, I use Fritz 7 for customers who are getting brand new tanks, but I bring media from my tanks also. Yeah. So I've used, is it Fritz 7? Is that what it is? There's something, is it Fritz or Fritz Quick Start? Is that what I'm thinking of? Fritz Quick Start, I think. I don't know. Taking too long. I think that's a thing. Hopefully it's not a different brand. Fritz Zyme 7. Is that what I'm thinking of? Turbo Start. Turbo Start. I've used that. Okay. Something something Start. <laughs> but I know... So, unfortunately, I don't know like enough. I don't remember enough. But there was about six months ago when I was researching uh, these bottled bacterias. And when you get down to like the specific types... Um, like the actual like scientific name type of the bacteria. Uh, there was only a few of them, a few different types that actually worked. And I believe it was Marine Land, like back in the 90s, that developed the, like the first actual bottled bacteria that worked. Um, and they had like a patent for the longest time, then the patent ran out. And now there's all these other companies that do it. But I do remember Fritz is one of the ones that actually works from that original patent. I, I could be telling the story wrong, but I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure that's how it went. Cut both sponges in half. Yeah, cut them in half and sew them together. <laughs> I use Turbo Plus store. I use Turbo Plus store bacteria with my titles. Any experience on culturing tube effects worms? None, Josh. Absolutely none. Joel G says Bob is correct. <sighs> I don't know if I am or not, but I always like when someone says I am. <laughs> Objective, several fish sellers sell mom online. I have lots of mom. Like, is this a thing? Like, I don't sell uh, uh, duckweed. I don't sell duckweed because I feel like it's a nuisance and everyone should have a ton of it. But people buy duckweed. Are people buying... Uh, mulm? Like, that can't be a thing. Who's buying mulm? I don't know. <laughs> That's like, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> if someone's buying mulm, I'll sell it to you by the gallons, man. By the gallons. Barrels of it. Barrels. Uh, DD Bonsai says, how do you set up temporary quarantine tanks biomedia-wise? All I would do, like, if you want the ultimate quarantine tank, you never have to keep another tank set up you just all you do is you get yourself a tub like a tupperware tub like five gallons ten gallons whatever you want you keep your sponge filter this is another reason why you have a sponge filter like this tank behind me should have a sponge filter hidden over here somewhere it should because if i need to set up a quarantine tank i pull that sponge filter out i fill up my little tupperware tub of uh, with water and put the fish in there put the sponge filter in there Boom. Good to go. That's it. You don't have to buy a 10-gallon tank or a 20-gallon tank. You just get that tub ready. I mean, you could use a 5-gallon bucket. I mean, I wouldn't because that's not really – I mean, I'd rather have a square enclosure than a skinny, tall enclosure. But, man, that's all you need, man. Everyone should have a quarantine backup. Absolutely everyone. LRB sells loads of preserved water. All right. All right, lrbaquatics.com. What do we got here? Rainbow fish? Ooh, okay, I got to look at rainbow fish real quick. Let me let me take a look here. Uh, Amari, Amari, I have those. Okay, anyways. um, Scuds and Daphnia, now that's cool. Cycled Mulmy Bag of Water. I tell you what, I would, well, hmm. 
bag of cycled aquarium water to help jumpstart your new aquarium. A quick way to reduce cycling time to prep new tank in a hurry. The question is, does it work? Has anyone tried this? In my experience, again, I'm not trying to like crap on anyone's website, but in my experience, like beneficial bacteria dies really fast when there's no oxygen. So maybe, maybe that's a breather bag, <laughs> a bag of mom in a breather bag. All right. All right. <laughs> I have well-aged breeding tanks without filtrations on them. All they have is an air stone and a heater. I got tired of rainbow fish laying eggs on the sponge filters and not mops. It works, right? It works. According to me, nothing at Sand Creek Class 2. I personally own 14,561 MTS snails, but others consider them a pest. Malaysian trumpet snails, hands down, the best snails ever, ever. Chris says, I'll take some duckweed. I can't grow it fast enough for my severums and rainbows. I got, so I sold off all my goiter river rainbows. And the nice thing about goiter rivers is that they eat duckweed. So I was like slowly moving my colony from tank to tank as they finished off the duckweed. But now I can't do that anymore. And now my duckweed is getting out of control. Hmm. Don't think beneficial bacteria dies that fast. I've had media out of water for eight hours by accident, put it back in the new tank, and it was still cycled. I mean, there's definitely a lot of things that can go into it, definitely. Uh, I know my tank is overstocked because 55-gallon plastic barrel have a large enough diameter to hold my Pleco, about 10 inches. I'm trying to figure out affordable ways to get my fish load smaller. <sighs> well, the nice thing about a Pleco in a plastic barrel is is that it's gonna attach onto the sides. So it's not like, it's not like a schooling fish that's gonna wanna go back and forth and really need like the length. Plecos are probably one of the fish you can get away with doing like a barrel. Uh, what do MTS eat detritus? So they'll, they'll eat like dying plant matter, um, leftover fish food. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> there you go duckweed for life and i got both forms i got like the mini duckweed and the big duckweed awful uh, michael says hey i'll just put an application for a new lfs that is awesome would love a new job well good luck buddy good luck platy the one i buy is seven thousand on the light scale which is good for plants and shows fish colors really well are you talking about your your color spectrum I had a 12 inch pleco in a 40 centimeter cube for months because it was trying to kill my fish. I can't release it, obviously, so it took it five months to even rehome it. Self in plecos, common plecos, should not be in the hobby. Should not. Killing Orphan says 20 gallon stocking ideas. Epistogrammas. I know you are all expecting me to say rainbow fish, but epistos. I would do a pair of epistogramma and some type of rasbora or tetra schooling fish there you go for once i didn't say rainbow fish all right matt m says are you a fan of using leaves botanicals and aquarium yes every time i go hiking or anything outside i am always keeping my eye open for pieces of driftwood or just wood in general that would be good in an aquarium um so yes definitely second part maybe for black water look or benefits of the tannins or both all of the above all of the above um i don't like when tannins get like really crazy and it's like tea soup in there and you can't even see anything uh but i don't mind like a just a small like brown tint in the water it doesn't bother me Pleco guy TM agreed. I've been saying it for years. Common plecos shouldn't be in the hobby. Absolutely not. Get them out of the hobby. They are way too far abused. Way too abused. Curtis says, but rainbow fish is always the right answer. Um, yeah, I mean, the problem is, is that 20 gallons, you're pretty much stuck with like pseudomagills. I don't know of any like other rainbow. Uh, maybe like a pygmaea, but even pygmaeas get pretty big. Like, yeah. Uh, Kaylor's Aquatic says, Bob, any news on restocking your store? Nope. Nope. Um, 
I've got I've got nothing. I mean, I've got fish, but nothing new coming in. Nothing new. I'm I I will be posting a list um soon, but the mail system right now is just not kind to me. It's just not. And it's like hmm, I can make like 2 or 300 dollars a week selling fish and kill them all and have to replace them and just the hassle. It's just it's just not worth a few hundred bucks a week. It's yeah, I'm sorry. It's just too much of a hassle like Beef jerky for dinner. That's what I had last night for dinner. Curtis St. Martin with a $1 super chat. Thank you. Uh, Josh says, nah, common plugins have their place in the shops don't balance, but the shops don't balance how many they bring in and they don't responsibly sell them. Well, I mean, that's a completely different aspect. Like, responsibly selling them, you know, um, letting them know what they're going to get into. But the problem is, is a lot of places don't. Like, someone will say, like, I want a sucker mouth catfish. To clean algae and you're like this fish gets like 18 inches long and they're like i don't care i still want it and they're like okay and then they sell it it's ridiculous danny does danny does life says speaking of rainbow fish when do we need to bring those guys back in for the season it's feeling colder it got down into the 40s into the 40s you could just take some of that insulation and wrap it around the, the tub <laughs> I'm I'm always thinking about it. I'm always thinking about it, but it's going to be up into the 90s. So, we have at least one more heat wave coming. Uh JH Aquatic says USPS is sketchy right now. Yeah. Uh I can't even tell you the last time I shipped out fish where the tracking was actually accurate. So, yeah. Literally every lake in my town is filled with common plecos. Yeah, they really just should not be in the hobby. There's a there's a point when when only like one in a hundred people that buy a common pleco are keeping it responsibly, it just needs to go away. Just get rid of it. Don't sell it. If I ever owned a local fish store, I would never bring in self in. I would never bring in common plecos. Never. Especially when there is a fish just as cheap as as a common pleco. I'm talking about the bushy nose pleco. Does a way better job at cleaning algae and stays way smaller. I mean, you're talking about a six inch fish versus like a two foot fish. So, yeah, if I ever owned a local fish store, bristle nose plecos all day long, no common plecos ever, ever. The fish will probably be coming out of the ponds this weekend. Probably, yeah, maybe up where you're at. Yeah. Uh, Zen Ginger said 40s. The low was 80 degrees here last night. So jealous. Yeah, it got cold. It got cold. But last I checked, uh, we're going to get some some uh, 90 degree heat coming up. Now it's down to the 80s now, but, you know, they don't even know what it's going to be like tomorrow. So we'll see. We'll see. I think I've decided I wanted a rubber lip pleco. I can't find one. Jessica Taylor, another fish that is far superior to the common pleco. Uh, as far as algae eating and staying small, the rubber lip pleco, I can get them, but I have to buy like 500 of them, and that's not happening. <laughs> no. But rubber lip plecos are amazing. They're super cool looking. Some of them are spotted. Some of them have stripes on them. Yeah, you can't go wrong. Clown plecos are cool, but I believe them to be not the greatest algae eaters. <laughs> So, yeah, if we're talking strictly algae eaters, go with the rubber. If you want, if you don't care about algae, clown plecos, awesome, super awesome. I love my clown pleco, and they live like 20-some years. This little clown pleco, they, you know, they get like four, maybe five inches tops. Like, that's pretty rare. Living for 20 to 25 years, super awesome. Pablo <laughs> says, I'll be team auto sinkless. Yeah. Uh, Jessica says, I don't want 500. It's probably still too hot to ship to Texas. Yeah. Yeah, I cannot. The rubber lip plecos are one of those ones where I have to buy, like, so many. It's not 500, but I think I have to buy, like, 100. Maybe it's 50, but still, it would take me 50 years to sell 50 of those. Uh, my clowns never eat algae. Yeah. So there's there's the way to tell as well. Um what your what your pleco eats and i'll be doing a video on that eventually so 
Where can you buy Clown Pleco's Fish People? Whew. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who has them right now. I got screwed twice with Self and Pleco's, and I still have one, says Curtis St. Martis. Martin. <sighs> Anyways, anyways. Siamese algae eaters, autos, flying fox. I love flying fox fish. Not, not enough people keep flying fox fish. It's been, I mean, it's been like five years since I've had one. So maybe it's time to get one again. Um, but yeah. Virginia Beach probably has clown plecos. I had a common pleco and he got over 12 inches and started eating adult angelfish. Yeah, they're just, should not be in the hobby. They just shouldn't. You can agree, you can disagree, but that's just, that's just one dude's opinion, man. Just one dude's opinion. Michael with the $10 super chat. Do you believe tanks need to be taken down every three to four, five years? Negative. I have a dirty tank that's seven years old. First of all, Awesome. Dirt of tanks. Super awesome. A dirt of tank. How long would I go on a dirt of tank? A dirt of tank, I wouldn't even think about redoing it until like the 10 year mark. Dirt of tanks are so amazing. Uh, you, I have a dirt of tank that is seven years old and totally healthy, but I get weird red algae and green spot, super hard water, and he tips. Well, the green spot algae is probably coming from your super hard water. Um, green spot is definitely an excess of phosphate, uh, maybe different food. Phosph I can never remember if it's phosphate or potassium. And every time this comes up, I always say it. I know it's, I know it's the one that starts with P. That's all I know. It's potassium or phosphate. I don't know. So either way, <laughs> I got you in the right direction there. It's one of those two that you have a, uh, excess of for green spot. The, the, the weird red algae I don't know. I've never been able to figure that one out. I've gotten it like once in my lifetime. Uh, and I don't think it's because your tank is dirted. Um, when I had it, it wasn't in my dirted tank. When I set up my three, 280, it's either 280 or 300 gallon, gallon acrylic tank. I'm like 99% sure I'm going to do dirt. Like 99%. Is that Jimmy Gimbel's aquarium in the background? Yes, it is. Um, so no. So I would say like what three to five years hmm, probably like aqua soil is going to break down and turn to mush after a couple after three to five years. Um, I don't have much experience with ADA, but I've done like the other brands of aqua soils and they definitely break down after a couple years. So yeah, like aqua soils I would replace. I probably eco complete. I don't know. I would ever replace eco complete. Um, there's definitely a point when it's going to run out of some minerals, but I don't know that I would maybe after like the five year mark, would I get rid of eco complete? Okay. Keep hitting the like button. Yes. Hit the like button. Bristle nose will not leave near ice snails alone. Any ideas? Hmm. I've never heard of that before in my life. Phosphate phosphate. It could be your food. It could be your food then. Maybe uh, your food has an excess of phosphates in it. Katie's almost living the dream says, got to go get ready for work, guys. Thanks for taking the time to do a live stream. And thanks to the mods. Keep me updated on your yellow rainbow fry girly. My yellow. I'm just kidding. Our, our yellow rainbow fry. Um, with the soil I get for gardening... Gardening kill fish because it has compost in it or would it grow plants and not harm fish? The only thing you have to watch out for is any type of um, like I almost said algicide, but like pesticide or, or any type of chemical that's used for like killing bugs or like deterring bugs. Um, you definitely want like 100 percent potting soil organic. Um, Seepal133 says, I think the Amano shrimp will eat the red algae. I'm not certain though. So when I get the red algae, it's the same thing as green spot. It looks the same, except it's red. So it's really hard. It's almost impossible to scrape off. Um, and I feel like 
like the red algae I get, Amano's wouldn't be able to do anything about that. Scott's Aquatic says, can we please get 250 likes, please? Thank you, everyone. How many are we at? I can't even see. We're at 360 people, though. That's pretty amazing. Uh, Priscilla says, had a dirty tank once. Plants look like a million bucks. Yeah. I mean, dirty tanks are amazing. So when I do I set up that two, 280, I need to figure out if it's a 280 or 300. It's probably realistically like a like 250, but whatever. <laughs> Uh, I think I'm I'm like really dead set on doing uh, dirted because mainly it's cheap. <laughs> uh, a 280 gallon tank of like using Eco Complete, no, thank you. That's like a $600 bill. No, no. Uh, I get organic gardening soil from STL Compost. Uh, they make a raised raised bed mix that grows plants great here in South. Tampa Lake and good old St. Louis. I've never seen a good looking. I've never seen a good looking dirt at tank pugs. Um, the, like if you, the, the big, like I think it's 220 or something gallon tank that Dustin has is dirted and it looks amazing. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt that there's, you know, rainbow fish in it. That helps. But my dirt at tank, I could probably, let me show you maybe if I can find it. Uh, I was going through some old pictures of mine today. And let's see, where is it at? I will show you my old dirty tank, possibly. If I can quickly, quickly find the picture. Now, I'm not saying this is amazing, but it's a, uh, you know, Okay, here we go. Daryl Deemer. Um, sure, let's try this. Dun, dun, dun. So this is dirt capped with sand, um, and there's still a little eco-complete. So I took out eco-complete, dirted it, capped it with sand, and uh, yeah, this is sometime later. But, I mean, every single plant in here is thriving. Every single plant. So there you go. I'm not saying it's amazing, but there's not a single plant dying in here. So there you go. There you go. Bob Kaler with the $1 super chat. Thank you. And Daryl Deemer, what's up, buddy? With the $5 super chat. One of the oldest, oldest members. Uh, Dirt is definitely the way to go. Bentley loves to dog on dirt of tanks. <laughs> I mean... So here, here, there's definitely some negatives to dirty tanks. And the reason that I went away from dirty tanks is because they're dirty. Shocker. Uh, if you're like me and you like to fiddle in your tanks all the time, I'm talking like pulling plants out, trying new plants, uh, changing around the hardscape, it gets dirty. It gets dirty quick. There's things you can do so that like, I mean, if you want to ruin your tank, Pull up an Amazon sword that's been growing in dirt for like a year. <laughs> I mean, talk about nasty. Nasty. Um, dirt is definitely the way to go. Bentley. Oh, I already got that one. I already got that one. So, yeah, I'm going to be doing dirted. And the reason is because I'm not going to be screwing around with that tank a lot because it's too big. Like, I'd have to get up on a step ladder and you have to like reach in. This this tank is like three feet tall, I think. So once something's planted, it's staying planted. I'm not gonna screw around. Uh, Bob, that is a gorgeous tank, well designed, and I love those cardinals. I love to plant a tank, then walk away. That's pretty much how I always do it. You know? But there comes a point when it's like, I wanna try this plant, or I wanna take these plants out of this tank and put them in this other tank. So. I can only not fidget for so long, but the fact that the 280 gallon is like three feet tall, I'm not going to be reaching in there like every couple weeks and changing things around. Uh, sorry, I was watching some frogs croak, <laughs> like dying or calling. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully like croaking, like ribbit, ribbit. You cannot do a dirty tank for profit. Yes, it's a mess. And then some you could if you're doing stem plants. Um, the other advantage of dirty tanks is you really don't get a lot of algae. 
just the, the the carbon and dirt really keeps algae at bay it really does i'm not saying you're never gonna like you you won't ever get algae you you'll get some but it's nothing like anything else i saw a video where someone was feeding their pleco cocktail shrimp is that okay yes sarah lynn snow i feed shrimp regularly to all my tanks at pleco's Love it. Anything that plecos can rasp on, right? So they're just grabbing onto it and they're digging their teeth in and just rasping away. That's what they're doing. Yep. Uh, frozen, I buy D. What is it called? D veined or, you know, the, the shrimp where they actually take the poop out and they take the tail off. Frozen. Uncooked. No, cooked. 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 There you go. Frozen, cooked. De-veined, detailed. I think. You know, I have some. I can just go look. Let me go look, cause I need to get some more water, anyways. Uh, where is my little screen? Here we go. Okay, coming back. Oh, wrong one. There is a crested gecko. Here we go. That's the right one. So, right here. Walmart. Great value. Deveined. Tail off. Peeled. Small. How small is small, you say? Small is this small. Works great. Works great. Nope, you can't have any of this. Go away. Go away. Go away. Silver flying fox are awesome. All. All flying fox. Wait. Wait. Okay. All right. There you go. Thanks for the super chat. Oh, did I miss one? Did I miss one? Oh, no. Daryl Deemer. Okay. All right. There you go. Leah Jet says, since I started a bunch of shrimp tanks, I can no longer eat shrimp. I have no problem. Shrimp pasta, I love it. I love it. <laughs> I can eat it every day for like a week straight, and then I'll get sick of it. <laughs> There's no music? What? Oh, what a, what a waste. Jeez. Jeez. How do I thaw the shrimp? I run it under a warm water. That's it. Just run it up, run it under warm water until it's not frozen anymore and toss it in. Just toss it in. Love shrimp like that. One for them, one for me. One for them, two for me. <laughs> yeah. Objective viewer. Objective. I was gone for a sec. What's the shrimp for? Somebody asked if they could feed these to, uh, to plecos. And you could feed these to just about any fish any fish so my i have a 125 gallon tank with a bunch of plecos in it and there's also some corridoras and a rainbow fish in it and they eat it as well everything eats it everything eats it kenny overhaul says tampa tom fishing where you been miss seeing you around good to be good to see him back though yep um candy got her favorite song there you go <laughs> Just checking one thing here, guys. Bear with me. Oh, excuse me. All right. I used to keep Frontoza. They loved shrimp. Everything loves. I mean, it's just a. Obviously, it's not something you want to feed uh, every single day. But yeah. Uh, Michael says peeled, deveined, quick frozen. I'm breeding red, really shrimp. They throw some straight reds. Uh, can I ever breed straight cherries from Rillies? I would think so. I mean, I don't know. I don't see why not. Kaler's, Kaler's Aquatic says my snooty, <laughs> snooty Severums refuse that shrimp, but they love jumbo krill, jumbo krill. Um, yeah, I'm sure you could. Uh, 
Reallys, I kept red Reallys for a little bit, and they threw a lot of just straight red, and I didn't want a coal, so I just gave them all away. Should I add a group of Hillstream loaches to my pond? It depends on your temperature. So Hillstream loaches, there's a couple things to keep in mind with Hillstream loaches. Uh, they love water flow, but it's not technically necessary. However, they love cooler temperatures, but not like down to the 50s. I'm talking like, you know, upper 60s. And then they need lots of oxygen, tons of oxygen. So it really depends on your pond. Like I couldn't do it in my ponds because it gets too cold. Uh, Jesse, hello, 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 hello. Uh, I made peace with it because it made Curtis so happy. What? Oh, the song? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So what else do we got here? We got about a half hour left. The l best last name ever, Camacho. I have no idea what you mean. No idea. What's the proper diet for clown pleco? For a year, eat wood. Now I find it eating tetracolor granules. They are a wood eater. Um, let me just verify. But I'm like 99% sure you should have wood in with your clown pleco. But, I mean, what doesn't eat the, the tetracolor granules? Um, <laughs> I don't think there's a single fish that doesn't eat that stuff. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, driftwood. Definitely need driftwood for clown plecos. There's a lot of like misinformation on plecos in general. But it's the internet. What do you expect? Uh, Bob, rubber look plecos really like upper 60s to lower 70 temps too. Um, I keep all my tanks at 74. Um, well, I mean, that's what I keep my room at. So tanks that are down lower to the ground stay colder. Tanks that are warmer or taller stay warmer. But, yeah, I've had no problems with um, – rubber lip plecos being cool the pump on the easy ring doesn't work anymore can the pump can the pump be replaced hmm i don't know i don't know oh uh, thanks candy it's sad story but i was watching replays well it is good to see you again tampa tom fishing cobalt foods aren't any different or better in any way <laughs> okay <laughs> thanks thank you <laughs> they gotta be better and worse than something like they're probably better than Wardley's and they're probably worse than I don't know extreme I don't know it's been a long time since I bought cobalt food though it's not it's not bad stuff though definitely not bad stuff are there other fish foods other than bug bites that use insects as main ingredients? For smaller fish like tetras, quarries, and insects uh, likely make up a lot of their diet. Plus, my fish love bug bites. You could make your own. So it's just black soldier fly larva, and you can buy that stuff by, like, the bagfuls on Amazon for dirt cheap and just make your own. You crush it up. And you put it in like rapashi or any type of gel food or make your own gel food with uh, black soldier larva fly. So, yeah, there's there's other options. Are there other is there anything like manufactured? I don't think so. I don't think so. Sebo 133 says I just got three sitting on petrocola catfish for my 30 gallon long. Is that enough of them or do I techn technically need six? Uh, if I do six is 30 gallons enough. Three is fine. Three is just fine. They're going to get. I don't, I don't know, six and a 30 gallon, it's it's doable. It's doable. Yeah. You could get more if you want. Oh, that's an awesome reference, Curtis. Uh, Hip Aquatics, they can live at higher temps, but will, will reduce their lifespan. Yeah, well, that's pretty much true with anything. So just keep that in mind. That's why I live in a cold state, so that I can live forever. A lesson learned with fish is if something catches your eye, buy it because if you never see it again, you'll regret it or want it forever. Well, yes and no. Let's not uh, let's not tell people impulse buy here. The nice thing about the internet is that you have it with you everywhere now on your phone. If you see a fish you like, just spend a second and Google it. That's all you got to do. It's 
real simple. I had a chance to buy six skunk quarries and I never saw them again. I don't know. That's a really common Corydora. Really common. How often per day, per week, do you run the Twin Star Sterilizer? Uh, so this is not my tank. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't use it. I would never buy it. Um, it's kind of useless, but, um, yeah, it's just something that looks cool. That's it. That's not very practical. Sorry to say. Uh, what brand is Bug Bites? It's Fluval. Fluval makes Bug Bites. Uh, I have Tetris and Betas. Been on the fence about trying it. It's really good food. It is. I don't think I've had a single fish not go crazy. Uh, it's it's good. It's a good food. Fluval's tripping, but I still can't knock Bug Bites. Uh, yeah, as Candy says, this tank belonged to Jimmy, and after him trying it out, he says don't waste your money on it. So, yeah, it's just something that looks cool. If you want something that, that looks like that, seriously, buy a CO2 diffuser and hook it up to an air pump. <laughs> you get the small bubbles. Uh, just picked up eight sequences from Aquabid. They're tiny, so no color, no color yet. Just hoping they're as yellow as Axel Rod Eye. They are not, but they are still really yellow. I have Sikuensis. Um, I have the Amari, the um, Amari, Amari as well, another yellow one. Um, I would say Sikuensis, it gets pretty close, but honestly, the Axel Rod Eye, that's like a, a whole other level of yellow. But it's a really, really cool fish, and it, you probably got them from the same person I did, so you're getting good quality fish. Yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll be awesome. I have adults. I have about 20 adults and I have about eight juvenile slash sub adults growing out. So yeah, it's a good purchase. <laughs> you won't regret it. They're a really good purchase. Jimmy be flipping, tripping, flipping, tripping. I have the twin star M five and it's, <laughs> it's an expensive joke. There you go. Like, it, it just doesn't make sense. It, it doesn't. I mean, we, we were talking about snake oil earlier. If you really want to talk about snake oil, there it is. There it is. Just when something doesn't make sense, it just doesn't make sense. You know, that's just the way it is. I made Caleb sa sad. Jimmy, the box he thought was hard. I got open in seconds. What? Um, I'm worried about buying fish online. Any tips? vet the seller um there's places that you never want to buy fish from like arizona aquatic gardeners i think that's it it's arizona aquatic something right i should probably look before i talk trash arizona aquatic gardens so yeah when you type in Arizona Aquatic Gardens, the very first thing that comes up is scams. Probably don't want to buy from this place. And it is, they, they are awful. Probably one of the worst fish companies in existence. Terrible, 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 terrible. So you really got to vet the buyer. If you're buying on a place like Aquabid and you're buying from someone that has like two, two reviews, um, I probably hold off, let them get some more reviews. Um, it's really easy to scam people on Aquabid, so I really like, unless they have like a hundred reviews, I generally won't go for it on Aquabid. Uh, wait, we shouldn't buy the magic beans and snake oil from that creepy guy. <laughs> uh, Jimmy says, I gave Caleb puzzle boxes for his birthday and candy showed him up. Oh, okay. Well, that, there. Makes a little more sense with some context. <laughs> Uh, Michael says, I run only sponge filters and power heads. Can you convince me why hang on back matters on 55 gallons or less? No. Nope. Unless you want extra flow. There's really, I mean, you have power heads, so you don't need the flow. So why? Why? Just stick with your sponge filters. Uh, Zen Ginger says, Candy, that's a good thing. Never let tiny humans win. The longer they think they are, you're a superhero, the better. Aw. Think about adding three emerald quarries to the three already in a 20-gallon. Yes. 
Will the additional quarries be okay? Yes. Or will the additional fish just stress out the ones I have? No. I would absolutely always keep quarries in a group of six. Even if it was in a 10-gallon tank, I would keep six. That's my rule. Um, I want to buy from Akuna, but they're on the East Coast. I am on the East Coast here on the West Coast, stuff with USPS currently. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not. It's why I'm not shipping fish. So I can't speak for anyone else, but how do they get reviews if people are waiting for reviews? How do you establish credit when people won't give you credit because you have no credit established? <laughs> you just got to wait. Bob, have you done anything with the tanks you bought on sale? Uh, negative. Negative. Uh, they are up at Danny's. Actually, yeah. Actually, yeah. One of the 75 gallons. Uh, is up at Danny's house because her 125 blew a seam on Friday. Yep, 125-gallon tank, blew a seam. So one of the 75 gallons got moved into that room, and everything from the 125 went into the 75. And, yeah, that's a whole big mess that <laughs> not very pleasant. But, yeah. Otherwise, I only, I only was able to get two 75s and a 29. That's it. And they're all up there in the, the fish shed. Fish shed. Uh, yes, but someone has to buy. Yeah, well, then go do it. Go on Aquabid and buy from everyone that has like one or two reviews. There you go. Aquatasi. Aquatasi, I mean. <laughs> Is it possible to keep a mono shrimp with crebenzas or with a crib? Try to eat them. Um, I'm assuming they will be food. Uh, you can get some pretty big mono shrimp that might possibly work if you're like heavily planted. But I feel like over time, eventually the cribs will find them and pick them off one by one. So the famous aquatic. What's up, buddy? <laughs> I live in Pittsburgh and I got 36 mono shrimp from Aquahuna and they were all in great health. Uh, I just added teeny tiny sponge filters to my two and a half gallon beta tanks. Will they be effective? They are so small. Absolutely. So they're going to do a few things for you. I mean, they will help clear up your water, you know, filter the water. They're in the, their filter. So they'll do that. But they'll also oxygenate the water. And uh, you should always have some type of filtration uh, with bettas. With, with, well, really with any fish. So, yep. Absolutely worth throwing in there. Um, is it possible? Yep. Uh, sad Danny. Yeah, it was, uh, interesting. So we were actually, it happened on Friday and we also went to aquarium co-op Friday night to film. So couldn't have happened on a worse day. I mean, I, I sh it could have, I mean, let's be real. That's not really that big of a problem. You can't film at the co-op, but it was by far her best looking tank. <laughs> so but it was 30 years old, I believe. Oh, there she's right there. I know, Candy, I was so bummed. Literally my healthiest tank and biggest tank. So I planned on moving it to the shed last. Well, now we got to get that 240 out of my garage and into your shed. ASAP. ASAP as possible. John says, I just got four chocolate cichlids on eBay from Florida to SoCal. All four did good. That site had lots of positive reviews, and the box took two days to get to my door. That's pretty good. Like It's all about vetting the seller. That's all you got to do. Make sure you're buying it from uh, you know someone that knows what they're doing. I truly think it's a matter of, of option. Personally, I believe bettas do best with zero flow. I definitely, definitely the case with wild species. Uh, I mean, yeah, everyone has their own uh, ways of doing things for sure. Curtis says, not planning on resealing it. When you could buy, and th I mean, and this is what I said. Like, you can buy a brand new one for $300. Or you could spend, like, days and days and days resealing it. I've resealed a 125, so I know the kind of work it takes to go into resealing a 125. And me, personally, I would just buy a new one. Um, you're always going to have doubt. Like, okay, this is a uh, 125. I just resealed it. Did I do it good enough? I don't know. Like, even if it holds water now, did I reseal it well enough that in a year it's still going to hold water? I don't know. I'm maybe, maybe I'm the only one that would doubt my own work, but 
I don't know. I resealed a 125 and for 300 bucks, like for just peace of mind and also the labor it would save, I'll drop $300 all day long. Quad says, I've never resealed anything larger than a 20 gallon. I've also resealed a 33 gallon long and that was insanely easier, insanely easier. And 33 gallons of water, it's a lot less like weight on my mind as far as like, is this going to hold long term? Uh, I mean, because there's, there's really no question about it. So, uh, lots of mods here tonight. Well, that's why they're mods. Cause they're here every night, dude. <laughs> um, S S simply S what's good, man. What's good. Goop says, yeah, I'd be 200% doubting my work all the time. I ended up resealing it and then breaking it <laughs> like the day after. So, uh, how long did it take? It probably took like two days. I would say like a day removing the silicone, like a day, another, you know, a day sealing it, then waiting a week, filling it up with water, waiting another week or two. I think I had it filled with water for about three weeks before I was finally like, okay, I can empty this thing out. I trust it to put it in my room. And then I cracked the corner of it because <laughs> I, I tilted it up and Anyways, I cracked it, and that was the end of that tank. I just sold it. I, I got $80 for it, sold it to someone who needed a big tank for a python. So, yeah, I don't know. That's that's my 125-gallon story, reseal story. 385 watching, 250 likes. Hey, did we get the 250? That would be awesome. I have plants in the beta tanks, too, and I have a flow control on the air pumps. So I keep bubbling to a minimum. I would I would always do a sponge filter, but that's just my way. There is more than one right way to do things, especially in this hobby. Especially there's, I don't think that there's any like, this is the only way to do it scenarios. I think there's always multiple ways to do things in this hobby. Uh, but that's that's just like my opinion, dude. I don't know. Uh, Michael says, I never thought I would pay someone to pay my house. It's done twice as good and half the time. Apply same logic to resealing a tank when you don't know what you're doing. The only reason I resealed the 33 gallon is because it's an extremely rare size. Like 33 gallon longs are so hard to come by around here. Um, though I would say the only tank that's probably more rare in my area is the 40 gallon long that's the only one that's more rare uh i still seal it oh man i don't know texas fish room says i have a 240 i need to reseal right now not looking forward to it oh man now that much water i definitely wouldn't trust myself <laughs> i know and it's the crazy thing is it's like it's not even that hard it's just time consuming and then just like a 240 gallon like that would always anytime i leave my house i'm gonna be like yeah man are those are those seals gonna hold i don't know i don't know hmm. does carbon hurt live plants not directly but it does remove certain beneficial minerals out of the water so there's plenty but there's plenty of, of people doing planted tanks with carbon without any problems Amber, Big City Betta says, agreed, Bob, each and own personally, live plants are my favorite filter. Even my biker's tank is filtered by just plants. I will always say yes to plants. Always. Ooh. Oh, man, I was hoping it was going to be something juicy. Someone's comment got deleted, and it wasn't even that juicy. Uh, Cooley Kev. There is a 33 long in my LFS I drool over every time I pick up frozen food, but I don't have the money or the space, so I just shed a tear. Yeah, the 33 gallon long is pretty fun tank. Um, second only to the 40 gallon long. Same thing. It's kind of like, what is it? A 55 gallon is what? Like 20 inches? And a 40 gallon, I believe, is like 60, 16 inches tall. The 33 gallon is 12 inches. Yeah, so it's like right in the middle. Uh, dimension with 33 gallon long is four feet by one foot by one foot. So it's just long and skinny. 
Uh, Curtis St. Martin says, what is the biggest Cory Dora? I've got one in a 55, but I want to get him a buddy or two. The one I have is well over three inches long. So the thing with Cory Doras is like they're not aggressive towards each other. So you could buy um, – there's definitely some ones that are bigger, like stir-by Corys get big, salt and pepper Corys get big. Uh, but even if you did like, like pandas, which generally stay smaller, like they'd be just fine and they would all school around. Why does Carib C suggest that after putting their little magic sauce in the water 20 minutes later that you can safely add fish? Um, <laughs> it's just snake oil, man. Snake oil. The same reason like the, a, a 20 gallon or even like the 10 gallon all in one kits have like pictures of goldfish in them. Like these manufacturers are just awful. Like, it's all about making a dollar. That's all they care about. They don't care about the fish. They don't care about the fish keeper. They just want you to keep buying their crap. And that's just the way this industry is. Um, this industry is like no other industry I've ever been a part of. Like, the pet industry, whether it's reptiles uh, or, uh, or aquatics, fish. It's all about just turning over as much product as they can as fast as they can. And it's really, it's really disappointing. There's a few, like, ethical companies out there, but, man, any of the large ones, they don't care. They don't they don't care. Uh, it can get un ugly under the hood. Um, can you have a mixed Corey crew? Yeah. Yeah, like, they're, they're all social. They're all social. So it'd be better to have, like, a mixed school than, like, one all by itself. Always. Um, I have a whatever this fish is, <laughs> Cares fish, and breeding in a 33 gallon long with mutt guppies. Um, I'm gonna have to Google this fish. Amatitlania septum fasciata. Let's see, what is this? Uh, that looks like. Hmm. This looks like the Crypto Heroes Myrna. Did it get renamed? It looks exactly like it. Okay, how can I do this? Let's do this again. Yoink. This to me, this looks exactly like a Crypto Heroes Myrna. I could be wrong, but I wonder if it got like reclassified and renamed and all that stuff. Interesting. Birds are the worst. So expensive. Corydoras on Seachem Fluorite. Um, I've done it successfully. Uh, what else we got going on here? It's supposed to be bioactive, like starter bacteria, the Carib C1. Again, I don't trust any of it at all. I don't. I don't. I would wait. I would get my test kit, and I would make sure it's cycled. I would never set up a tank and just throw fish in it with a brand new filter with some magic potion in a, in a bottle. <laughs> no, no, I would spend the $30 on my test kit or the $15 on the test strips. They work just as good. I don't care what anyone says. They work just as good. And I would wait until it's cycled. I mean, that's it. Let, I mean, let's be real. If you're not patient enough to wait for your tank to be cycled, you're not going to be successful in this hobby. This entire hobby is built around patience. Just be patient. Patient. You got you're here for a long time, folks. You know, 80, 100 years. You can wait a, you can wait a couple weeks to add fish to your fish tank. Uh KG6 list says, "I don't trust the beneficial bacteria in a bottle." Yeah, I don't either. I don't either. Get your test kit. This is what companies should be pushing, test kits. Not snake oil. Test kits. Test kits. Test kits. Uh, Aquatic says, my daughter has six quarries in a tank with Seachem fluorite. No problems at all. Yep. Yep. And if you're feeding them, then they're not going to be. So I feel like here's, here's the thing. A lot of people, a lot of like the fish police yell at you for having Corydoras on uh, anything other than sand. 
But if you're feeding your Corydoras to where they don't have to like dig down into the gravel, then they're not going to dig down in the gravel and they're not going to run off, rub off their barbells. If you feed them properly and uh, you feed them enough, then they're going to be just fine. What do I know? Uh, didn't you say the Tetra test strips were better than the API strips? Um, I think if I said that, I think it was because they were cheaper. I think it was because they were cheaper. Hey, Bob, I'm doing a five gallon crystal red shrimp setup with stratum. Any tips? So stratum has been known to leach ammonia for like the first couple months. So I would just monitor if that's happening or not. Get your test kit out and test for ammonia. That's what I would do. Zen Ginger says 415 viewers. That's amazing. It seems like just yesterday we were trying to get to 300. Uh, where is it at? Can we confirm 409? I think that's more than last week. I think. I think last week we capped out at 398. And I want to go on a little a little YouTube story here. I know you guys don't care, but this month on YouTube has been my best month ever. Uh, and when it comes to just about every single category, so I really want to thank everyone who's been watching. Um, obviously, the lurkers. I mean, the lurkers are like 99% of my channel. So you know, huge thank you to the lurkers, um, the subscribers. Of course, members, everyone. Uh, it's really been an amazing month. And, you know, this whole thing started out with a three-hour Skype call with John from KG Tropicals uh, back in July. It might have been June even, but I'm pretty sure it was July. Um, you know, honestly, I'd kind of lost the fire. I kind of lost motivation. And it was that three-hour phone call that, like, really, like, lit the fire just to uh, get motivated again with YouTube because um, I had gotten really, really lazy with YouTube. I'm, I can't even lie about it, right? Um, and then combine that a few weeks later, Corey offers the help as well. And it's just like been night and day difference. Um, the content has been way better. Like I'm actually having fun again. And uh it shows. I mean, there's over 400 people here when like a month ago we were getting like 150. So I hope that you guys enjoy it because I've been having so much fun. And honestly, I've got like the next three months of videos already filmed. It's a crazy, not three months, probably like six weeks of videos already filmed. Um, so yeah, it's just been really awesome. Uh, I'm extremely blessed and you guys are amazing. And so thank you like everyone, everyone. Thank you. Anyways, moving off. Enough of that sappy stuff. <laughs> uh, if you haven't hit the like button, please do so. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Scott. Uh, Bob just wants to beat John. That's the motivation. No, nope, I still like uh, when other people do well. Um, when people pass me, uh, I think it's pretty awesome. Uh, actually, the gravel mix is bioactive. That's why it's wet. Uh, and the little packet is a biomagnet. I thought that that it was a water clarifier. Like I've seen the water clarifier in those things, which has never worked. Uh, um, uh, actually I just tried this like two weeks ago and the little water clarifier, I put it in there and like came back like two hours later and it was still just thick. I'm like, so that even that stuff didn't work. <laughs> uh, Hepa aquatic says content has been great with Bob. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. It does. Uh, you know, it's nice to see that. I mean, I pretty much put everything on hold. <laughs> like I haven't done anything. I quit the gaming channel, like everything. So it's, it's been way more fun and it's all totally been worth it. And we'll see. Well, hopefully we keep climbing. Hey, Bob, notice you're getting more views and members. Happy for you, bud. Hope the channel keeps thriving. Thank you, Matthew Vargas with the $10 super chat and Curtis St. Martin following up with a dollar. Um, yeah, I've had quite a few people message me, and it's been really cool. It's uh, definitely, like, reignited the fire. So I think, um, I, th I think like, 
having a fish friends again, like Danny, um, hanging out with Corey a lot, um, just being around other fish people, like really like motivates me to do more fish things. Um, there was a time last year, like when all like my fish buddies moved away, Jimmy moved away, Scott at Scott's aquatic moved away. Um, there was another local guy that wasn't a YouTuber, but he moved away and it was just like in the span of like two weeks, like everyone was gone and I'm like, I got no one to hang out with and talk fish with anymore. <laughs> so, oh man. And now Jimmy's back. Now we got Danny who's really been helpful with the channel and Corey and all making videos again, hanging out with fish people. Uh, it's way more interesting and fun. Uh, think about doing a fire mouth cichlid green terror and green terror and blue acara together. What do you think? I think you're going to have your hands full. <laughs> you're going to have a lot of fish that could possibly be angry. Uh, cool fish, but not fish that I keep, but they're still cool fish. There's a lot of cool fish that I would probably never keep because they're just not my style, but I still think that they're cool. Mr. Ed's aquatic with the $5 super chat. Keep up the good work, Bob. It shows you're having fun again. Yeah. Like, Oh man, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I, I can't even say anything more about it. I've already said, I'm starting to repeat myself now. <laughs> uh, I know the feeling only one I can talk fish with is my brother and he sucks. Oh, <laughs> Did, you, did I go camping with Jimmy this weekend? No, Jimmy and I went up into the mountains yesterday. Just a day trip. Filmed it. Uh, it's going to be a members-only video because it would, I can't post it to my channel. It's not about fish. So it has to go to the members-only section, um, which is I, – I hate to say it. Like, I'm not trying to do, like, a members sales pitch. I'm, I never am. But utilizing the members-only section for stuff that's not fish-related – It'll, it gives me that other outlet. Like I'm making videos that are just not always about fish. And so I never really utilized the member section like that before until recently. And it just, again, keeps things really fun and fresh. So fish is definitely a cultist thing. People who don't do it don't understand how addicting it is. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of hobbies like that, though. <laughs> Everybody eventually turns to the dark side and gets a tank if you talk about fish enough around them. <laughs> maybe the, maybe that's the plan. Maybe that's the plan. You know, uh, my dad kept fish when I was younger. Uh, I mean, one of the influences of me getting into animals was my dad. Uh, he hasn't had a fish tank in probably like 40 years. Uh, growing up, I had fish. So it's kind of like he had a fish tank, but it was still mine. And since I got back into fish, I don't even know how many years ago, like every time he comes over to my house, he's like, hmm, can I check out your fish room? Hey, what's different? Hey, what's going on? He always wants to come in the fish room. So I think I think I might be pretty, getting pretty close to him, talking him into getting a fish tank, but we'll see. He has his pond. He does have his pond, and he, and he has his trout in there, um, his perch. He loves his uh, – he loves all the snails that he gets out of there, like everything. So he's definitely into it. Uh, Bob, what got you back into fish? Uh, it was actually hiking. Um, came across a like a, just a pool that was like pretty much like all but dried up, and there was just a little bit of fish flopping around. Some, uh, uh, I believe, fathead minnows, but I don't know for sure. And I scooped them up in my water bottle, brought them home. I had an old ten-gallon tank from when I kept reptiles still hanging around. Uh, filled it up, and it's been downhill ever since. I took those uh, minnows, I had them for about two months, and then I went and released them into my dad's pond, and uh, where I'm sure they all got eaten, but, you know, it's a cycle of life, I guess. Uh, they were going to die out there, dried up anyway, so at least they got a chance in my dad's pond, but I'm sure the trout and perch got them. Uh, Loki, trying to get my friends to start tanks to have reliable people to watch over the tanks during vacations. Also, it allows you to do more. Like, even having uh, Danny, like, so local, um, like, if I wanted to, like, try a plan out, but I don't have any room or a fish, I could be like, you got any room up there or vice versa. Um, it really is. So it's 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 a huge advantage of having local fish friends for sure. S, <laughs> simply S, says, Tis true. Uh, my roommates got tanks after showing them the science and actually cool factor of keeping fish tanks. Yeah, if you really get into the science part of it, I mean, you could really go nuts. Like, 
just I, I feel like the general public, <laughs> you know, the, the civilians that don't keep fish, you're, you're, you're the civilians, you don't keep fish, you're a civilian. You're not, you're not out here in the, in the dirt and the grime with us fish keepers. But, like, if you really get into the science of it, it's pretty interesting. And I don't know that I've ever, like, started talking about, like, the nitrogen cycle or anything like that. And people have, like, oh, I had no idea. Like, they're always, like, blown away by everything that goes on into it in, in a fish tank. And uh, it, it's certainly interesting. It, I don't think it's a hard sell either. I think it's really easy to talk people into getting fish tanks. Um, you know, it, it, if they have the desire, I guess. If they're, like, on the fence. Uh, but if it's someone who's just, I don't want to do the maintenance. I don't want to do water change. Obviously, don't try to push it on them. <laughs> Chevy Fish says, my friends get that deer in the headlights look when I talk fish to them. It's like people come over and they see the fish room and they're like, whoa, this is really cool. Um, but it's like you could sell, you could be like, this is really cool. I mean, you're kind of crazy, but this is still pretty cool. <laughs> the, the look in their face. Uh, we had a, we had an appraiser out, I think, last year. And he saw the fish room and he was like, <laughs> like but he was like, whoa, this is cool. So we'll see. I don't know. I don't think he ran home and bought a fish tank, but. People dig it. It's like going to the zoo, right? I mean, everyone loves going to the zoo, but you're not going to come home and, like, buy gorillas and bears and, and, you know, keep them. Anyways, anyways. I tell my friends I keep so many fish because the ladies love it. Just hear them say, really. I hey, I will tell you, Mr. Ed's Aquatics, if you get, like, just that beautiful aquascape, like, nature-looking tank, they dig it. They dig it. <laughs> Regina with the $5 super chat. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, four friends and I decided to make our own fish club. Now there are 86 people in the club. That is crazy awesome. Like the amount of work that goes into a fish club, um, the amount of work you do for free, like you really got to love this hobby to do that. And that is just simply amazing. T-Blade says, I'm resistant to multiple tank syndrome. I've had only one tank for 10 years. Wow. Wow. That is probably the most amazing thing I've heard all this month. <laughs> That's crazy. Learning a mix of the science as well as the art of aquascaping, aquascaping is what got me into it, says Jalen. Yep. There's like there's so many different like areas of this hobby to explore. It's crazy. It's crazy. Take your betta for a walk. Well, let's not, I mean, that's like what about Bob stuff there when he's taking his goldfish for a walk. I, I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't go that far. But 12 likes to 300, holy smokes, and 400. You know, the record on my channel is like 454 in one live stream. And that was with Corey. That's when Corey and I did a live stream. We're getting pretty close to that. Maybe next week. Maybe next week. Matt says, fish are nice compared to dogs, cats, reptiles because fish can go longer without food and easily don't need care for a week. Matt, I hate to say you're wrong. Uh, also, easy for someone to drop in food once or twice. That's it. I'm, I'm going to disagree because there is nothing easier than snakes. They eat once every four to six weeks. I mean... You could literally, like, fly a hot air balloon around the globe, come back, and your snakes still won't need to eat. <laughs> so when it comes to, like, dogs, cats, and and a lot of reptiles, sure. But snakes, you can't beat a snake. <laughs> I mean, they can go. My carpet python went six months without eating. Over six months. So that's that's not a good thing. But still, when it comes to, like, ease... You got to say, like, you can't you can't put snakes in there because <laughs> whew, they go a long time, a long time. Aquatic he says, agreed, snakes are easy to keep, especially ball pythons. Like, room temperature, no special lighting, nothing. It's like crested geckos. I mean, you have to feed crested geckos. But, again, room temperature, I mean, yeah, snake poop is horrible. <laughs> RJL, snake poop is something else, I'll tell you. <laughs> Hey, Bob, what are your thoughts on natural filters such as small aquaponic overhead sumps? 
Um, is it a natural filter if it's a sump? Uh, I will say that I have always put plants in my sump, whether it's overhead or underneath. Um, yeah, always, always plants in the sump. Uh, aquaponic systems are pretty awesome. I want to set one up someday um, when I have the space to actually do something big. Like there's all like these aquaponic systems that you can find now for like these mini house apartment people. But no, 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 no. I want like, uh, like I want the 275 gallon IBC tote. I want like an eight foot bed of plants to, to, uh, to plant in. So I want something big. Uh, maybe some Madagascar roaches. <laughs> um, dubia roaches. Yeah. Roaches. Yeah. Yeah, roaches, sure, sure. I can dig it. Hey, Bob, what are your thoughts on... Oh, I just read that one. So, little muscles, I, I I think they're awesome. And I hope to be able to do one eventually. Eventually. Uh, there's, like, the like the the kits now where you can, where you can grow plants on top, like spices. Uh, I think they're insanely overpriced right now. Hopefully, they come down in price because I would probably try something like that out just for fun. But, and, like, not long-term by any means. Uh, New Mexico Aquatic says, I love large, unheated, heavily planted tanks with a bubbler and low fish load. Super easy. Yes. Yeah. When you get, like, your tank just packed full of plants and there's hardly any fish in there, uh, there's something to be said about that. There's definitely something to be said about that. That's something you should be able to DIY easy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Super easy. But the thing about, like, the all-in-one is that it looks nice. If I DIY something, it's probably not going to look nice. <laughs> Let's be real. You, I know my skill set. It's going to be like just a block on top of a tank and like a pump shooting up and then going back down. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Oh, man. If you could only keep one tank for the rest of your life, what size would it be and what would you put in it? Uh, well, it would have to be huge, like, like Corey's 800-gallon tank for starters. Uh, if not bigger, I don't know if there's like, like a dollar sign associated with this or like a max size associated with it. Um, but I would want it, I would want like a 10 foot tank, three feet tall, three feet deep, like front to back depth. Um, I could keep that for a very long time. And I would definitely do rainbow fish and I would do, uh, I would do smaller cichlids like dwarf species. I would do Corydoras, definitely some plecos in there. Um, some type of tetra and I would probably do like mixed rainbow species mixed. Um, a steam fight aquatics, 301 likes mods get a raise. There you go. Right there. Scott's aquatic says 10% more per hour. Screw it. I'll give you guys 100% more per hour. 100%. The only mod I've ever paid is Candy Overhauls. And I was just trolling her and sent her like a penny or something on PayPal. <laughs> I said, thanks for modding tonight. Here's a penny. <laughs> yeah. I'm that guy. <laughs> I clipped a Pothos branch to a 10-gallon. The root system is coming nicely. Adds a little character. Yeah, Pothos. It'll also grow underwater as well. Quadacy says, I've got a tank right now that is wall-to-wall -wall plants and only six small fish. It's the healthiest, easiest tank I've ever cared for. Perfect water parameters without trying. Yep. that's. I think that's one of the biggest issues people have with planted tanks is overstocking it. Overstocking. 100% of zero is zero. That's it. Uh, last time I asked for a raise, they gave me a phone book to sit on. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, I have a 33 long that I'm setting up with nano fish only. There you go. What would you recommend for a plant to put in with a pleco? Well, it depends on what type of pleco. Um, the only really pleco you need to worry about are bristlenose plecos. They will eat uh, sword plants and one night they will just obliterate sword plants uh otherwise not a lot of plecos are going to mess with your plants at all unless you have like 
uh, anubius and there's algae growing on the anubius leaf you might get some plecos sucking on that sucking on that algae otherwise it's just personal preference like um plecos generally don't bother plants at all i put a plant in my pond and now it weighs more than my car how do i get it out uh some sort of tractor i don't know how much i mean what are we talking here like thousand you have a thousand pound plant <laughs> Uh, Aquatic says if it's a clown pleco, they will completely, yeah. Most plecos are going to leave your plants alone, except like the, that's the only instance I know of are bristle nose and sword plants. That's it. Torch it. Yeah. Uh, why would the mods need payment? We are blessed with Bob's presence. Oh, so sweet. My 100% problem with plants are severums. Yeah. And banded leper, leper, yeah. I'm just going to call the leopard because I can never say that word. Banded leopard fish. Um, that's those uh, banded leperinus, leperinus, uh, whatever it is, were some of my favorite fish as a kid. Uh, I, I'm so glad that I never impulse bought, bought one. I don't know why because uh, I love like that banded. That banded look is one of my favorite looks on fish. Um, yeah, but boy. They get big and they can get mean, at like super mean. So as a kid, I'm glad I never impulse bought one. I unfortunately did that with other fish like bala sharks and red tail sharks and every shark under the sun. Um, yeah. Are clown plecos good algae eater? If not, what would you suggest for a 29 gallon with sword plants? I would do rubber lip plecos. We talked about them earlier. Rubber lip plecos. Pretty sure my bristlenose plecos are why my jungle valve disappeared, but not positive. Hmm. I've done lots of jungle valve with bristlenose, and maybe maybe you got like the one-off bristlenose that was like, yeah, I love this jungle valve. I'm going to have me some jungle valve. But I've never had an issue with plecos and jungle valve. But that doesn't mean that it's not an issue. Just nothing, nothing that I've experienced. All right, guys. I think we're going to wind this down. Here's our last comment. Good evening, all. Seafood Aquatics providing a muscle for the move. Watched your last aquarium co-op fish room tour. Was awesome, by the way, for all of you from Europe. Wait. By the way, for all of you from Europe watching, easy life. Vugel saves life. I have no idea what that is, but all right. If you're in Europe, apparently you need to look at that. <laughs> all right. So we got 400 some people. We got over 300 likes. That's super amazing. Uh, we got two new members, which is awesome. Janice and Indoor Fishing Inside. Always love that name. And, of course, a myriad of Super Chats. Fish Room Fever. James, what's up, my friend? Michael, Fish Tank Barn. Logan's Aquatics. Fish Tank Barn again. Elizabeth Hughes. Uh, oh, yep. I almost thought I missed that one, but I didn't. Kaler's Aquatics. Aqua Discovery. Eric Furlow Indoor. Nope, that's a member. Kaler's Aquatics. Dwayne Allgood, Chris Jobs Aquarium Tank, Curtis St. Martin, Curtis St. Martin, Michael, Daryl Deemer, Michael, Kaler's Aquatics again, Curtis St. Martin's again, Matthew Vargas, Curtis St. Martin's, and Mr. Ed's Aquatics. Absolutely an amazing live stream. Had a lot of fun. Uh, didn't stay on topic too long, but I tried. I did try. <laughs> so to everyone re-watching, just know I tried. I really did. <laughs> Uh, 314 likes. That's awesome. Um, I cannot wait till next Monday because these live streams have been. Did you guys see that last week's live stream? Like even the live streams, it, it's at like 7,000 views for a live stream. That's crazy. Let me take a look. 7,500 views. Two weeks ago, 6,000 views. Three weeks ago, 5,500 views. I mean, you guys are amazing. A amazing. But. I got to go. I'm hungry. Dogs are hungry. Got to leave. So thanks, everyone. The lurkers, the subscribers, members, mods. You guys are excellent. And I hope to see you all here again next week. I don't know what we're going to talk about yet. I was thinking about maybe like bucket list fish. Like we could do a stream on bucket list fish, dream fish. Um, I don't know. I don't know. If you got suggestions for next week's stream, leave them in the comments after after this loads. <laughs> but uh, have a good night, day, evening, whatever. I'm going to go watch some home improvement and have some dinner. <laughs>